Hi YouTube, I'm Aymun, and welcome to Cooking with Aymun. Uh, this is the first cooking video of 2017 for me. Uh, when I actually first started my channel, one of the first cooking videos that I did was Little Neck Clams, and uh, I think a memorable one, a memorable one was ramen. I like that one. Uh, but in this video, we're gonna I'm gonna show you uh, how to cook curry ayam or chicken curry. Uh, I'm not gonna teach you because that would mean I'm a professional and I'm obviously not. Alright, so let's get right to cooking. I call this a simple Malaysian uh, chicken curry and I call it simple because uh, you could do this even if you're out camping. Uh, it doesn't require a blender or anything, no electronics, only your stove or burner. And of course your ingredients. Oh yeah, ingredients, let's get to that. So first we have, of course, curry. Then you have the garlic, the ginger, and the shallots. Next you have cinnamon sticks, uh, anise seeds, cardamom, uh, cloves, and curry leaves. Next you have coconut milk, uh, oil of course, and potatoes. And finally, uh, salt too. And who for could forget the main ingredient, other than curry? Chicken. So, uh, we had a whole chicken and then we cut it in half so that we could take the other half and use it for a more elaborate cur curry tomorrow. However, we took this half and we cut it into small pieces so that it's gonna cook easier. And then you can use whatever type of uh, chicken you want. You can use the breast, you can use the thigh, you can use the drumstick. Uh, it's all up to you. So beforehand, you should um, take the water, take some water and with the curry, uh, make, stir it into a, a paste. Uh, some people don't do this, but we like to do it. Um, just for measures. Okay, next you want to turn on the burner, uh, our burner's already ready, then you want to move the pan over. Next you want to put oil in, uh, since this is a big pot we need uh, just a bit enough oil to cover the bottom. Then, you want to wait until it's hot. Uh, if you want to check how it's hot, you just sprinkle your fingers in some water and then sprinkle it. And if it crackles, that means it's hot. As you can hear, it's crackling. Next, you want to take your cardamom, your cinnamon sticks, and your curry leaves, and you want to put them in there. Then you want to stir. Be careful. Next, you want to take your um, your garlic, your shallots, and your ginger, you want to stir them in as well. Okay, so you're gonna want to cook it for a few minutes until the onions and, I mean, the garlic and the shallots turn yellow and then once you do that you want to take your curry paste and you want to uh, put it in there make sure you get all of it in there the most important part then you want to keep stirring Alright, so if it gets too thick uh, along the way, you're going to want to add some water. Uh, another thing you can do is you want to also, if the temperature is too high, you can also lower it. You already have it lowered. Uh, you want to keep the curry from getting too thick. You want to keep it liquid. 
just keep stirring. All right, so if we look in the pot after a few minutes, uh, we can see that it starts to turn oily. And that's when we can tell when we want to put the chicken in. So we're gonna put the chicken in and stir it in. You don't have to do it one at a time. You can just dump the whole thing in. Be careful of some splashage. And then stir it in. Get it everywhere. You can see it's covered by uh, curry everywhere. All right, so next we're gonna add uh, a bit of water and uh, let the chicken boil. After it starts to boiling, uh, we wanna put the cover on and let it simmer. For around 15 to 20 minutes, uh, we only have a little bit of chicken so it doesn't need that much time to cook. Uh, my dad said that undercooked chicken is dangerous because it can make you uh, sick and overcooked chicken is just hard. So we just want to basically poach the chicken. Alright, so it has reached a boil, so now we're just going to turn it to low and put the cover on. And then we can turn our attention to other things. So now that this is simmering, we're going to focus on our attention on the ingredients. I'm going to peel some potatoes. Um, now talking about ingredient sizes, uh, we use uh, you can use around four garlic cloves, but since this is huge, we, we used only around three uh, cloves. As for ginger, we only used around one inch. For shallots, we used... For shallots, we only used two of them. Uh, uh, Lamy doesn't like the simple curry, because in simple curry, we don't blend things. And Zami doesn't like uh, little pieces of food. So he always spits them out, and that's why we always cook the complicated curry, which uses a blender. Uh, remember, so that uh, because you don't want a chicken to cook on one side only, you want to stir occasionally. Um, as far as spices go, it's all up to you really, it's only your preferences. Um, if you're cooking a Malaysian dish, you have to use Malaysian spices, and in this case, we're using babas. Uh, for this, we're going to use two spoonfuls, or you could buy a small packet. Uh, but however, the big ones are more cost effective. All right. So talking about the curry, you can use whatever brand you want. Uh, you could use Raja Kari or Adabi. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as it's made in Malaysia. And actually, it's hard to find these even at Oriental stores. Uh, we order from a place online, uh, it's called Top Line, it's in New York. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this video, the reason that I'm doing this video is so that I can help stay the culture alive. Uh, also because it's hard to find mo authentic Malaysian cuisine in the US. Uh, maybe there's one store in Chicago, San Francisco, or New York. But I'm doing this video to show you how to uh, cook Malaysian cuisine. So basically, in a nutshell, I'm doing this video so that uh, because some people don't know how to make Malaysian cuisine, so I'm doing this to show how easy it is so that you too can cook it for yourself. Um, and also, I'm going to put where you can find Malaysian spices in the link in the description below. The reason that we're simmering this is so that we can have 30 or 40 minutes of other time to do things like clean up, cut potatoes, and cook rice or vegetables. And uh, Especially rice here. Yesterday, my uh, uncle came and he wanted some rice and a mural, he didn't know how to cook rice. So this is a video to teach you. So basically, you want to take uh, your amount of rice. Since we only have four people, we're going to take three cups and we're going to uh, put it in there. We don't have to rinse it because uh, it's already rinsed anyway. And then you're gonna want to take double of the three cups, six cups of water, and put it in there. The general rule for rice cooking is that you want to take your rice and you want to add double of that of water. So you want to take six cups of water with the measuring glass. You want to take 
Okay, so my dad wants to change it. If you don't have a measuring cup on hand, example, during camping, then you can always take the uh, cup that you use to measure the rice and use that instead. You just need to do it double the amount of times that you did with the rice. Dump it in there. Then five more times. And finally, number six. Then, then you can start cooking. All right. So cooking rice is pretty simple. Uh, all you have to do is plug in the rice cooker and press the button to start cooking. Uh, this is Zoji Rushi. It's one of the best rice cookers out there. It, per it cooks perfect rice if you want to eat it. Alright, next we're going to add some a bit of water because uh, we want a lot of gravy and Azami likes a lot of gravy, although my dad likes thicker gravy. So after we bring that to a boil, uh, we want to add the potatoes. Then a few minutes after you add the potatoes, you want to add your coconut milk and if you don't like coconut milk, you can add the evaporated milk. Um, okay, it's at a boil. Now we can add the uh, potatoes, stir them in. I can feel my, my cat uh, flying on the back of my apron. And then you wait a few minutes and add your milk. Alright, so once it's uh, at a boil, we're going to take the coconut milk. We're gonna, since this is only half a chicken, we're gonna only take half a can of coconut milk. And we're just gonna put it in. And then you're going to want to stir it in. And after you stir it in, and you once again bring it to a boil, you're going to add some salt. And if optional, you want to, you can add some tamarind to make it salty, I mean uh, sour, or some sugar, but they're optional, you don't have to do that. Um, for the salt, you want to, as you go, you, you just want to sprinkle just a bit and taste as you go to make sure you, you have the right uh, flavor. Alright, so next we're got, it's at a boil, and I'm going to add some salt, and as I said before, you want to taste it as you go, so that you get the right flavor. Okay, you want to sprinkle it, and get a taste. Need more flavor, you want to add more salt. Just a tiny more salt, and then after that, after you're done seasoning, you just want to let it simmer, and then you're ready to serve. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. I should mention that if you're cooking for other people other than your family, you shouldn't double dip like what I just did. Uh, that's not professional and you should never do it in a restaurant. You don't want to get your germs on there. Next, you want, I'm going to add, uh, this is optional, I'm going to add some tamarind. Uh, I'm going to keep the solids from going by covering it and just let the liquid go. Stir it in and let it simmer. So, you know, you get that sourness. With the cover. And then you're almost ready to serve. Alright, so why we let that simmer, we should turn our attentions to sides. Um, this is roti chinai, my personal favorite side to go with curry. Uh, this right here, this brand is uh, Kawan Parada. Um, and the instructions are on the back. Basically, what we do is we take the frozen thing out. And we're going, so it should come out like this with uh, dough in between two sh sheets of plastic. You're going to take one sheet off and put it upside down on the pan and then peel the other side off 
then you should let that wait for around uh, a minute and then after you wait a minute you flip it over all right so it's been a minute now you want to flip it just like a pancake and after you flip it you want to press down on it because it's going to be like a balloon uh please forgive me on my flipping skills you want to press down on it see it's like a balloon so after it's cooked on its other side for a minute you just want to flip it to get it uh, another 30 seconds after 30 seconds you want to flip it again just to get it evenly cooked uh also a warning if you're using a non-stick pan you want to use a plastic spatula like this see like a balloon it's inflating it's been around 30 minutes flip it And you can put it on your plate. Alright, so did I say 30 minutes? I meant 30 seconds. Alright, next you want to flip this back onto your uh, your plate. And then you want to take the next one. Peel one side off. And flip it on. Wait one minute, flip it. Wait one minute, flip it, wait 30 seconds, flip it, wait 30 seconds, then put it on your plate. Uh, I just want to mention if your uh, paratha or roti china has cuts, you probably won't see it bubble up. Um, also, some people like to fluff up the roti china, and my mom likes to do it by squishing it a bit. Uh, I don't like that, I like to get more uh, pieces. Uh, but while we do that, uh, you can close in on this. The brand is Kawa, and it's Parada. Parada also known as Roti China. Alright, so you might uh, see when you flip it that some parts of it are burnt and some aren't. Uh, you probably want to lower the heat, or you know, uh, cook it only for 30 seconds then flip it. Or you can just uh, rotate it. It's not an exact thing, it's not exact science, you have to work around it. Then, after this, we can put it on the plate. Alright, so the curry looks ready. Uh, I'd just like to mention that some people like to add some other stuff. Uh, some people like to use tomatoes. However, tomatoes don't last that long. Uh, some people like to use chili peppers to add just a bit of spiciness. And for decorative purposes, we're going to add some chili. Uh, and, I mean, it's optional, but you can knock out the seeds if you want to. And, you know, just make it just a bit less spicy and put it in there. We have a red one right here, and then mix it in. Uh, just to clarify, uh, when I say that the tomatoes won't last too long, I mean that if you put them in there, then the curry won't last too long. Uh, also, some people like to put chunks of onion in there too, uh, but it's all optional. This is just a simple curry. All right, so now we're waiting for the rice to cook. But for now, we're going to cook sayo, and basically, if you're a Malaysian, you eat with sayo. So, we're going to take these long beans that we grow in our uh, uh, garden in the backyard, and we're going to cut them up, and uh, along with soy sauce, shrimp, uh, and um, it's called shallots and garlic, we're going to saute them and make sayo. While my dad was cutting the uh, long beans to around 3 inches, I had the chance to clean up uh, our space because in our culture you have to clean up and put everything inside if you're cooking outside. So first we're going to put the pan over the burner and then uh, put oil. And then you have to wait until the oil gets hot. When the oil gets hot, you want to put in the garlic and the shallots, and you want to you also want to put in your chili peppers. Then after those uh, uh, boil, you want to add the shrimp as flavoring and the oyster sauce, not soy sauce, oyster sauce, uh, and just around two spoonfuls um, uh, into this. And a warning. Since you're using oyster sauce, uh, don't put too much salt because oyster sauce is already salty. Alright, so it looks like the rice is done because it has switched from cooking to keep warm. So after that, you want to uh, open the cover. Ooh, it gets really hot. You want to be careful. And you want to just stir it around a little. 
And then after that, you want to put the cover back on. And back to the side. Okay, so before we put a bit too much oil, my dad thinks, so we dumped it already. And as you can see, it's already crackling. So that means we can put the shallots and uh, garlic in. And the and the pepper, the chili pepper. And then you just, you just want to saute it. Then when it browns, uh, you want to add the shrimp to flavor it and the uh, oyster sauce. All right, so it's almost golden brown right now. And now we're gonna add the shrimp and then just stir it around. And then once you stirred it around, you basically just wanna take a few spoonfuls of the oyster sauce and put it in. Uh, hopefully I don't spill. We're gonna use two spoonfuls here. Oh, it's really slow, so I shouldn't worry about spill. Kind of like molasses, actually. Really viscous. All right. And then you put it in, and then stir it. Alright, so we added uh, another spoonful, just in case. And right after that, we're going to add the long beans. We're going to stir it in. Alright, so as you just saw from that, uh, it's a bit hard to cook in this pot. Uh, something's actually fell out. It's only green beans though, so it's alright. Uh, and this is why Chinese people use woks, because it's easier that way. And we don't actually have one right now, so we ordered it. And hopefully it will make the cooking a bit easier. For me and my mom, too. Alright, so you want to stir your sayo occasionally. And while you wait, you can test out your curry. Uh, so I have two options of side here. You can use bread or roti china or prada. So I'm going to take a bit of bread and dip it in. Mm. I'm not really some kind of food connoisseur or critic, so I don't have the actual words to describe it. Right now, all I can say it's delicious and tasty. Right, so now I'm gonna try the roti china. Oh, I'll shoot, I'll shoot through that. Then we try the roti china. Tear a piece off. Mmm! even better. Uh, and you also have the rice as a side too. Alright, so it looks like the sayo is done. Now we can turn off the burner and let it cool off for a minute. After it cools off, you put it in this bowl. And then, finally, we can bring in the entire feast for everyone to enjoy. Alright, dinner served. Usually we have more than this, but uh, you know, uh, cooking and making a video takes a lot of time, and we already did this late anyways. So, I'm Aymon, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, look at other videos on I and Aymon, especially in the future, my cooking videos. Uh, cook, or Chef Aymon, signing out. Peace. I have to clean up too.